Hey YouTube, so this is going to be our third part of our provisioning services configuration tutorial and specifically today what we're going to be talking about is boot device manager and how to create a boot partition so your actual your actual images, your target devices will boot from disk which has a small partition associated to it that points to the provisioning services server or servers. So first thing we want to do here is actually I need to shut down this PVS server and the reason being is because what we're going to do is we're going to be jumping to the storage tab and we're going to create a write cache drive and associate it to this PVS server for now because we'll actually be creating the partition within the write cache drive. You could have a separate drive but I think it's easier to consolidate um, the two into one just because it's it's cleaner so I'm gonna assign a 12 gig write cache drive essentially what this is is it's where all your temporary writes for your target devices are gonna go I like 12 because I usually assign like a 5 or 6 gig page file to that that write cache drive and we'll also be assigning the the boot partition which is um, fairly small so um, pretty uh, uh, negli neg negligible can't speak uh, but while that's booting back up let's go to your master image whether that be Windows 10 7 2012 R2 2016 doesn't really matter what you're gonna need on this device itself is you're gonna need to install the target device software so to, I already installed it but I'll, I'll show you where that's located so if you go to auto run for your PBS um, installation file, you'll see this option for target device installation. Just to choose target device installation and just walk through all of the defaults, it's a pretty straightforward install, but you will need that located on this master image. You will also need the VDA software if you plan on using this for um, your virtual app or virtual desktop environment. But I won't walk through that through this video series. So let's log back into the PVS server once that comes up and we're going to go into control panel. The first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to uh, create volumes on that new disk. So you'll see, maybe if I make this full screen that'll be easier. You'll see if I go to control panel and I type in, sorry, type in disk here, we have an option to create and format hard disk partitions. We'll want to bring that up. Uh, make sure this is MBR, master boot record. And if I expand this here, you will see I have my new 12 gig disk there. Let's create a new simple volume for that. And for this one, I'm gonna make it eight megs. This is where we're actually gonna put the boot file. And we wanna make sure we do not assign a drive letter or drive path to this partition and also do not format this volume. So you'll see there, it's it's there, it's primary partition. We would wanna actually mark this partition as active, so let's go ahead and do that. And then for this unallocated piece, let's create a new simple volume for that as well. And we'll use the rest of the space in this drive. And I like to assign a P drive as PVS for my write cache drive, but you could assign really any drive letter. And I'm gonna call this, right cache and we'll do next and finish and now we have our our disk here with our our two different volumes so go ahead and minimize those two and let's just type provisioning and you'll see I have a console for provisioning services boot device manager let's go ahead and launch that so you'll see a my IPs for my PVS servers are already here. So make sure you add both. If you have two, it does load balance automatically. Whereas if you did THCP with TFTP or T DHCP options, option 66, 67, you would need some type of load balancer to be able to load balance your PVS servers with BDM. It, it's gonna load balance automatically. Make sure verbose mode is selected for, for more diagnostic information. And then here, I'm gonna use DHCP to retrieve my device IP address. 
If you want to assign it a static IP and specify the gateway and DNS server, you can. Um, the main important thing here is for the boot device, make sure to choose a partition offset of one meg size eight meg. And then we're gonna just choose burn. And this is just gonna give you a warning that, hey, if it's already image, it's gonna go ahead and, um, and I believe it removes everything from that automatically. And we should see successful. And now that that's done, let's power down. Actually, let's not power down it yet. Let's um, go to the actual provisioning services console first. Make that full screen again so it's easier to see. We'll connect to this server. And one more thing, we're, a couple things we're going to need to do here as well. So under stores, we're going to want to create a temporary VDisk. I'll call that 110 master. And I'm going to give it 40 gigs, but make sure you allocate the size appropriate to your master image. And I'm going to create the VDisk here. And then if we expand sites and your site and device collections, we're also going to need to create a device here for that 110 image or whatever master you're using, depending on the operating system. To do that, just right click device collection and create device. And you'll see the screen here, um, it's, but I already have it here. So I'll just double click it. One thing to know here is choose um, boot from hard disk. So make sure that's assigned. Make sure to add that Mac address of your actual, um, your master image. It's going to be important. And then for VDIS, we're going to want to assign that VDIS we just created. So the reason we're booting from hard disk here, just as an FYI, is because we don't actually have a virtual disk created with an actual like OS assigned to it. So we're going to want that master image to boot from its hard disk first. And then we'll use the imaging software that PVS provides to create that image into our VDisk or to burn that image into our VDisk. So while we have that, I'm gonna shut my master image down as well as my PVS server down because we're gonna actually need to uh, detach this, this drive here. So give it one second. Looks like it's about to power off. All right, let's detach it. And then let's go to the storage tab of our image. And then we're gonna attach the disk. And I'll choose that right cache. And this is good to know, it already went into position zero. Um, but if it didn't, make sure it's in the first position because we actually want this master to boot from that right cache drive to point to the PBS server. And if all goes well, once we double click this, it'll find that PVS server and it'll boot from its own hard disk. And so far it looks pretty good. It's downloading the bootstrap file. You'll see that here from dot one, three, four. Um, let's see, connecting to the provisioning services not found. Let's see if it continues to go or not. Sometimes it does. PBS can be a little tricky like that. Oh, you know what? That's why. Let's boot. Let, make sure you boot your PBS server back up. Otherwise, you're going to run into the same issue I ran into. So once this is back up, I'll just go ahead and re reboot this one here. Let's go ahead and, oh, it's picking it up automatically. And virtual disk found, looks good. It's booting up, meaning it's booting from the hard disk. So everything looks good there. And one good way to check as well that everything looks right is if you go into the PBS console, and you expand sites, find site, device collection. We should see, yep, it has an IP address. It's got a green check mark. It looks good to go there. Let's go ahead and log in here. I always
always tend to type my password in wrong for some reason. And the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to actually use the imaging buzzer to burn to that B disk. This does take a lot of time. And I will probably pause the video or stop it here and continue on in either the next video series or we'll see. We'll see if we, uh, if I'm able to just pause this and continue it from this, the same video recording. Doesn't like my IP for some reason. I know why. Let's, um, let's change that to DHCP. There we go. All right, so we should have under Citrix, the imaging wizard. Why is that showing not good? Let's see if we can browse to it since. Let's go Citrix, provisioning services. All right, there it is. All right, so we have our imaging wizard here. <clears throat> this is going to be the IP of your PVS server. So I'll use that 134. Um, I'm using my Windows credentials because it's my admin credentials. And we want to, let's see. Let's copy this hard disk volume to a VDisk volume because we already have this Win10 master already created. I uh, didn't like that. All right, um, let's keep it simple. Let's just create a new VDisk. I'll call this Win10-master this time. And we'll do dynamic VHDX. Uh, if you do use KMS, you can select that here. I'm just going to choose none since this is a lab. Um, you know, you want to choose exactly what partitions to image because you don't want to image your actual write cache. You're just going to want to image your actual C drive here. So choose next here. Um, optimize hard disk before imaging. Choose edit optimization se settings. Hit OK. Um, and choose next. And then create. So again, I mentioned this before, but this does take some time. And what it should be doing is it should be creating that new VDisk. So if we go to the provisioning services server, and I go to VDisk, you'll see I have that win10-master. So it is doing stuff here. Um, it just will take some time. So I'll stop the video here, and I will either start off on a new video or if I can resume this one, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. Again, if you have any questions up to this point, feel free to write in the comment box below. And if you like this video so far, I'd really appreciate it if you give me a like. It um, really helps me out. So um, thanks, everyone. All right, so picking back where we left off, we should see the status successful if all went well with the provisioning services imaging wizard. So we'll go ahead and um, jump over to the PVS server. And we should see here, if we refresh, we have a larger Windows 10 master hard disk um, or VDisk image here. So all looks good there. So what we're going to want to do now, what we are going to want to do now is go to this device we have here, go into properties. We're going to go over to VDisk and... Yeah, that looks good there. So we actually have the right VDisk assigned. And let's do boot from VDisk this time. And we're gonna keep on production, that's that's good there. And let's go ahead and, let's choose done there. And let's shut down this this image very quickly, or sorry, this, this master. And the reason we're gonna do that is because now that we had the VDisk created, we should be able to detach the actual hard disk that contains the operating system. We shouldn't need this anymore because it should be booting from that VDisk we created. So we'll go ahead and detach that. And now we only have a small 12 gig file assigned to this Windows 10 master. 
So let's boot this up. And so far, so good. Looks like the virtual disk was found. Let's put this in the full screen. It looks like it's loading the operating system. So everything is looking really good. So we have a, a Windows 10 master that's actually booting from the VDisk and it's loading up. And if we even go to the store, we should see soon, hopefully, that if we refresh this, there's a connection associated to it. So you see, we actually have one connection there. And same with the device collection. We should have an IP, we do, and we should see a connection here, which we do. So all looks extremely well. I'm able to log in and I should have my entire OS, any applications I installed previously should be assigned to this VDisk and we should be good to go. So pretty simple. Um, again, there's a lot of steps associated to this though. So if you do run into any roadblocks, feel free to, to comment in the comment box below and let me know if you have any questions. Uh, thanks YouTube.